Good morning, everyone. My name is Orange from Mother Forever, and welcome to The Morning Orange, an early morning talking show to talk about the Mother series, fans of the series, and other folks in between. Welcome to the show, Echoes. How are you doing? Hey, everyone. It's your friendly neighborhood, Echoes. I'm doing wonderful, but I really want a pizza right now. <laughs> you want a pizza? Should I say you want one from Mock Pizza, or is it just like any kind of pizza you want? Mock pizza would be really good, but I want the viewers in the comments to suggest what kind of pizza I should eat after this show, even though this is pre-recorded. <coughs> but, you know, pl please suggest down below. Oh, yes. Insult <laughs> the viewers while you're at it. Anyways, so, we love let's, you. <laughs> so let's go ahead and, and uh, talk about your research into Mother 3 and Earthbound 64. You've been You've been doing this for 14, 15 years now, somewhere around there. Oh, geez. Yeah, like 15 years. I was geez like nine eight nine years old mm -hmm. <laughs> so it began because i got into mother two i played that by absolutely legal mean means <laughs> and uh, i was sure. on starman yeah starman.net and looking at all these screenshots and mother three at the time which was just the n64 duration the game boy one was still on the horizons there weren't any pictures and i just felt like there was this really awesome n64 classic that could have stood up to Zelda that we never got to play. And there just wasn't a lot of information on Starman or anywhere at the time. So I personally wanted to find out more, especially because we didn't know if the upcoming Mother 3 on the Game Boy would be the same story, the same characters. Eventually it was. So over time, it became more about finding how the N64 version transitioned into the Game Boy and what changes came with that. Oh, okay. So you you more or less felt like that there was a need rather than like a de a want or a desire. You felt like there was something that you needed to do in order to, you know, preserve this game's history, this this information that not a lot of people know about, right? So you Absolutely. took it upon yourself to to do that. And and that's very admirable, you know, in in my personal opinion. Um, I know that there's a lot of people who've done like preservation projects and they just, mm -hmm. you know, they, they fall out, they have a fallout of some sort. Um, and it surprises me that you've been on the ball on this, as most people would say, uh, for 15 years or so, you know, that's a whole decade and a half of just researching into a game that never existed. Um, was there, was there, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, was there any like flops in between? Was there any hardships, you know, like, um, you know, there's always the complications in between. It, c it couldn't have been easy. Oh, up until last year, basically. Uh, well, first it was just kind of personal interest and reading about it, looking into places people wouldn't usually. And through that, I found a lot of like Space World demo reviews and impressions, trying to figure out how exactly the game played, since the only thing we had were some Space World photos, which were insightful to how it looked but not how people uh, felt about the game or how it you know actually played in their hands but when it came to last year you know i had more of a group coming together people who understood japanese and that's where really we started to find a lot of information it became more about getting something out there uh, through the years i kind of organized the screenshots according to the development period and i tried to upload a Google Drive and get that out there and spread that information, but it wasn't really successful because I was kind of doing it on my own, which, you know, unless you're on Starman.net or have some sort of following, just it kind of gets swallowed by other things, right? Yeah, like it, it follows through the cracks. You got some people that, it, you know, they particularly find some sort of interest, but not entirely, you know? Like yeah. It's, yeah, it, it's definitely one of those things where it's either a hit or miss type of scenario and you have some people that, you know, could take advantage of you from, from finding this information <laughs> and, you know, putting it on, like, say, uh, you know, they, they, they're looking into the research or whatever. And they're just like, Hey, you know, I, I want to put this in my YouTube video and then they never credit you or something. It, it happens, you know, absolutely. But, uh, but, you know, I always, I always, you know, we've, we've known each other for, for not very long, but you know, at the same time, it feels like it's been years. Uh, but what what has compelled you to the Mother series specifically? Is, has there always been some sort of uh, deeper connection that you you don't normally talk about, or is it just you know something that you've always thought about when you when you first picked up the series? 
Yeah, when I first played Mother 2, what really compelled me was just how silly it was. You know, superficially, just getting into the series, it felt like, you know, the 90s Nickelodeon cartoons I grew up with, like Ren and Stimpy or Rocco's Modern Life, all those sorts of things. And it was very different from, say, Mario or Zelda, which in comparison felt a lot more grounded. Mario being a lot like Alice in Wonderland and Zelda being a lot like Lord of the Rings. Still very familiar. But Mother was something totally different. And then as, as I got more into it, you know, I found about the community and how passionate people were about it, which wasn't really around at the time for Mario or anything else. There wasn't any fan site like that. And that's what I found so compelling, how this game could touch people in many different ways. And then as I grew older and I finally got to play Mother 3, when the fan translation first came out, I found myself relating to a lot of the themes in the game. You know, my mother uh, left me when I was seven years old, and I connected through Lucas with uh, his loss of his mother and the struggles that came through with that. Oh, I see. I mean, I, I, could, definitely, I could definitely sympathize with that because my, my mom is, is not here and neither is my dad. So I definitely, I definitely see that compelling, you know, feeling of impact from, from Mother 3 in particular. Mm -hmm. But I always felt that there was something like that in all of the games, uh, mostly because the three games really, really do focus on, on the importance of family or the importance of friendship or the importance of, you know, life. And uh, I feel like those three things are, are something that a lot of people will take away from the games, even if even if they're not like completely interested or anything like that. You still you still have that experience, you know. So, yeah, I could definitely understand why you would you would have that takeaway from it. Yeah, especially what I really appreciate and why I think Mother is compelling to a lot of people is that there's something for everybody. And that's not something any series or product can do well, because you always want to target one audience to be successful. When you try to get a lot of cooks in the pot and try to please all sorts of different audiences, it can just fall apart because it feels disingenuous, like, uh, you know, kind of studio meddling in a way. But for Mother, coming from one man, he toy, he just felt like he wanted to include a lot of the things he found important or meaningful to him. For example, the character Tony, he had a lot of gay friends, so he felt he should include one in the game to pay respect for them. Instead of trying to please a certain audience, he just did it because it felt right. Yeah, especially, especially you know, like, for, for a country in, in Japan, you know, it, it's a very... It's a very different perspective, especially coming from somebody who's a celebrity to include something like that in a... In a and at least in their realm or in a, in a world where it, it's it's severely conservative. So, you know, I, I can imagine that would have been really hard for somebody to want to do that and, and not, not receive like any sort of backlash or anything. Cause it's mm -hmm. not, it's not something that is culturally adept as it is over in America or, or Canada or any other, other country. So I, I can respect that out of a toy for wanting to include things that, are natural, you know, that they're, you're going to meet those types of people. Um, it's kind of, it's kind of something that I've included in my own game, which I can't talk about, but, um, th you know, well, that'll be something I, I would get into, a later down the line. Um, but you did, you did help a lot in terms of the scripting for the mother direct, which we hosted on, uh, the 13th this, this month. Uh, this oh, is yes. being, this is being recorded in July. Or June, excuse me, not July. Um, and so, so what? What did you go with with the concept for that? I knew you were like researching heavily into some several mm -hmm. of the Nintendo directs just to get a g good glimpse or a good idea of what that was all about. So maybe, maybe you know, give some insight. What, what, what was the what was the idea you were going <laughs> with? Yeah, for that, really, it was just trying to emulate a similar feel to. Not so much the Nintendo Directs now, even though I think the presentation was based on the Nintendo Direct minis, I feel like the scripting is based on the earlier Nintendo Directs where they would have skits and a lot of jokes and gags to kind of engage the audience and make it just fun. So it was based on that, and that's where a lot of the puns came in, you know, say the JoJo reference or uh, you becoming a pirate for one scene. It was just 
to really engage the audience because when you have a guy talking between every game, it can kind of just drown out and they're just, they want the next trailer, but you know, every scene is just something interesting, something funny, especially since this is a mother direct, it should be, you know, very playful, very humorous because that's what the series is known for. So that's really where the script direction came towards in the mother direct. Right. And, and, you know, you, you wanted to have a, an approachable feel, right? So you, you, yes. you, you went with the direction of wanting to include lots of different aspects. I remember one of the, one of the old Nintendo directs we, we brought up, like when we were researching into was the one where it was talking about the year of Luigi. Yes. And, uh, <laughs> the one where Mr. Mr. Miyamoto was trying to vacuum uh, Mr. Iwata mm-hmm. And in a vacuum cleaner, and Mr. Iwata was wearing the Luigi hat and exactly. all that kind and of I stuff. Exactly, you wearing the pirate outfit. Yes, you can say there's yes. inspiration from yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I remember specifically after that direct. There's a picture of Iwata with a uh, with him looking at a banana. I I don't I don't understand the 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 context of that particular image, but. It's just him kind of like slightly looking in the camera and he's just holding a banana in his left hand. I think that was I think that was referencing Donkey Kong Country Returns. I think maybe I if that so. was coming up in an upcoming yeah. direct. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Either yeah. way, just the image. Yeah, just the it's image silly, itself. Is... But it's also kind of thought provoking. <laughs> Because you're, you're wondering what yeah. his expression is and what he's thinking. Yeah, is he going bananas? Is he thinking about bananas? You know, you don't you don't necessarily know. But speaking of bananas, speaking of Donkey Kong, <laughs> um, we you have been you have been a notorious known mm. fan of the Mario the Super Mario movie, and we oh, all yes. know we all know <laughs> that there's so many people out there that just. Oh, they 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 rag on, they rag on it so hard, but you know it's, oh, it's, yeah. it's it's a it's a good movie. It's a good it it's one of those it's movies just, that are just fun. It's one of those movies that it's so bad it's good, <laughs> you know. Exactly. So. Like, is it a good movie? No, uh, no, not really. But is it fun and entertaining? Yes, yes, yes mm-hmm. absolutely. So you know, let's talk about uh, the Mario movie archive. What what got you started there? What what is that all about? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. So I've been involved in there actually over a decade really uh, i've known and i've been a known visitor of the site since it started in 2007 uh i was just kind of looking up the movie i don't know the merchandise or something and i came across that and it was just really fascinating like starman.net where all of a sudden here's this community out of nowhere for something so niche that i couldn't help but try and get involved so I became an active member on the forums. I helped with some projects, uploaded and edited some videos for the people on the site, got to know them a little bit, and it kind of dropped off over the years because they got the movie released on Blu-ray in the UK, and then all of a sudden, I discover this tape that has (laughs) a work print version of the film, which is early in editing with additional scenes, unfinished VFX, whatnot, and... I was like, let's get the gang back together. Let's restore this and hopefully get an official extended cut release. <laughs> so that's my involvement. And really my inspiration behind it is the same as Earthbound 64, where I want to help educate people on viewing things from a different perspective. Because Earthbound 64, a lot of people say it's ugly. Super Mario Brothers, the movie, a lot of people say it's bad. But there's really more to it than that if you give the chance to really look into it and see how this came to be right so so like more or less you're you're trying to make others see more than just that outer shell of of those two things you know you want it to see it from an internal perspective you know there's more things involved in like you know for example earthbound 64 even even if it looks you know muddy and and looks bad visually there's a lot of stuff in that game that is tech on a technological level very advanced very yes. impressive for the time and the fact that that was on a nintendo 64 versus you know say the playstation that was coming out at the time or i think it was out at the time uh yes. it's not something that a lot of people really really expect from something that was in my opinion, it looked very low budget. I don't think they had a, actually a lot of money dived into that. And if they did, you know, 
that's a huge loss on not only a, a toys part, but, but you know, Nintendo, because Nintendo was trying to say, like, oh, this is going to be the next thing, like, next to Zelda and Mario, because they were trying to get it for the DD so hard. Now, the Super Mario movie, on the other hand, you know, it's just one of those things where they tried so many different concepts, so many ideas, and, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But yeah, no, they they yeah. wanted to make something like Tim Burton's Batman, where we're taking yeah. this kind of children's comical kind of silly concept into something a little more dark and for the whole family, but at the end kind of emulates the same sort of whimsical wonder. And of course, you can kind of debate whether they did that or not, but really, like Earthbound 64... It was just an experimental means to kind of push the technical technological boundaries because for Super Mario Brothers, it was one of the first films to use Photoshop. It created a Autodesk software, which went on to be used by Pixar and Toy Story. It was in the runnings for the Oscars for Best Visual Effects. It really is an impactful movie on the SFX industry, and everyone who works in it knows about it and how it really opened the boundaries for how CGI would be implemented in movies in the future. For sure, so it's, for it's sure, a really yeah. important movie historically. The only the only problem with um, that particular movie is that when I often hear somebody like talk about you know oh mm-hmm. you 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 did di- you were director of that movie or something like that you know <laughs> it, it seems to not get a lot of respect as you think it would, even though it did so much for the, you know, special effects industry and all these other film things, film related things, it doesn't seem to get the respect that it should hold. And I find that very, very interesting. But uh, yeah, it it was kind of doomed up to release. What happened was uh, the actor who played uh, King Koopa or Bowser in the movie, Dennis Hopper, wasn't happy with uh, what was going on set and how, you know, the directors and producers were fighting and the vision wasn't clear and the actors couldn't really do what they wanted. So he actually called up the, I think it was the Los Angeles Tribune and wrote a hate article on the directors and told them he was going to sabotage their career and have them never work in the industry again. That article was published and unfortunately that's what happened. Uh, Their agents dropped them, the phones weren't ringing and they never got work in Hollywood ever again. So really, it was set up for failure from the beginning, but it wasn't really their fault. Ah, I see. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's really, mm, that's like a huge, I, I didn't even know that. So that that's something I would have never suspected from such such a, a large <laughs> amount of drama around, oh, around it, that. It's a deep, deep rabbit hole, but I feel <laughs> that's where the disrespect kind of started, but I because see. of that, people knew what was going on set before the movie came out, so they didn't support it. Right. Even though everyone right. really put their best into it, you right. know, of course you want a product to be successful, but when one person kind of stirs the pot and then the whole thing just <laughs> overflows. Oh, yeah, yeah. So especially speak. when you start putting the garlic and the pepper in there and just oh, mm, stir it all. Oh yeah. But, Chemical you know, X. <laughs> Chemical <laughs> X. So, you know, oh man, I remember when you I brought you onto this project. This was what, last year, December, November, somewhere around that. Well, yeah, well, something like that. But for me it feels like it started fifteen years ago. It does, it does, it does, <laughs> certainly. But you know, um how do you feel about mother forever now versus what it was then like what were your expectations when we first started versus your expectations in the now yeah when it first started uh i thought it was going to be very small because we we had a small group supporting us who wanted to contribute and i felt like really we were making it for that group and if it got some other attention that'd be great but if not we put out a satisfactory uh project so it was really a personal thing at first to get the work and research that I put into out there published somewhere because I always wanted that. I did it so it would help educate other people. But you know, if other people saw the site, it'd be great. And then what happened is a lot of people saw the site <laughs> and it felt like, oh my goodness, well, we gotta do more then. You know, there's there's eyes on us. People are expecting, you know, what are we going to do next? So from there on out, it's it just felt like, let's get more creative. Let's not just 
put on like a wiki or a site. Uh, let's do videos. Let's do let's play content. So really, it became a really creative arts and crafts sort of thing, opposed to something kind of you know textual like a, a history book, which it really kind of was at first. Right. I remember I remember when we first started on like just working on a project together, um, we started with we started with rewriting a whole historical <laughs> page about Earthbound sixty four. Yeah. And uh that took um that took a a lot of, of time and just, you know, looking into things. I remember we we took about three or four days all on our own just to do that. And then I had to also pay a translator to get some of that stuff translated. Yeah, yeah. it was a different translator because now we have Cody Nicolo. Right, we have Cody. Somebody else it was somebody before. else, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and that cost, uh, I don't even remember how much that cost. But there were, there's just, you know, a, 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 a a culmination of things going on and you know i was having fun you know that that was the point you know absolutely that's I, what I it's really, all about i really think that out of this project and i know i'm going to talk to more of the mother forever staff when i get the chance you know here and there but you know out of all the things that we've done with this particular website i feel like it's so flexible it can be anything at this point it, it could be a podcast show it could be a youtube channel it could be a website it could be an interactive thing. I, I don't know. Like, you know, <laughs> a visual novel, a visual novel. I mean, it's coming. Yeah. We should make a mother forever dating simulator soon. <laughs> I still can't believe that's a fan gamer thing. Oh man. <laughs> but you know, like, um, I just got a call in the middle of, <laughs> in the middle of this. So if somebody, Oh hears, man, it's two podcasts in one. <laughs> so if somebody hears a discord notification, I'm sorry. Um, so, you know, there's always there's always something going on with with this website or something and and that's really really neat about it is that it doesn't feel like a niche series to me anymore. It feels like there's something to behold or something. You know, like it it's in some cases like a lot of people thought, you know, Fire Emblem is very niche, but now it's like a triple A thing now. So, um I don't know. I mean, what what do you think about that? Like, do you think uh, you think Mother yeah. Forever could turn like into a huge, huge, pretty much big thing later on? Or it's very interesting because I've been in this community a long time, and back in two thousand five, it was incredibly niche. I didn't know anyone who knew of Mother, and you know the people on that site in the forums were kind of the same group. You know, you had Reedman always posting, you had Tomato, you had Okai, which is Okaiji Dragon now, but everyone knew each other. It was very small. There were like some artsy animation projects, but then it grew into the Earthbound Bash, Earthbound USA, Earthbound Saga, all these wild, insane things. And it just grew and grew and grew. And I feel Mother Forever is the culmination of that because now we have our Mother Direct. Uh, you know, we have our Discord servers. We have you know, a social media type form. It's so interconnected now than it ever was before. And I think that's the best part about it. So it's going to keep growing. And hopefully as it grows, uh, we can do even more things, whether it's, you know, maybe a convention or more documentaries like Mother to Earth or Earthbound USA, uh, <laughs> maybe a concert, you know, who knows? The Super Soul bro Bros are out there. So I'm really that excited for true. what's next. Yeah. I mean, yeah. like the the things that I realized about this particular project, and we we had talked with Reed Young about it too, is just that we're living in an age where social media is such a heavy, heavy thing now. So the more that we get interconnected with, you know, the social media, you know, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, anything where people can remotely find us at a, at a at a not not a snail's pace, but like a rabbit's pace, you know. Um, it makes it easier to get it out there. You know, the mother direct, for example, yeah. is just, just the start. Um, we were not expecting that no. many people to watch that and video. It's um, great because it, it helps connect. Like I said, because it's about mother. Sure. But then there's other indies that are inspired by mother. So it really expands the reach just beyond the niche mother fan base. And the more people we get interested, the better. That's why I think 
you know, Undertale was really healthy for the mother community because it introduced so many new people to what inspired that game and it influenced it in many ways. I feel Undertale brought new life into the mother series. For sure. I think like all yeah. the, I think, and this is something that toy has also said is specifically, you know, like we are now living the life, you know, the livelihood that is mother four, you know, it's, <laughs> might not be it might not be something as good as a video game but you know we are living that a culmination of what he believes mother four would be and you know we we talked with reed young we talked to a few other pokes and and people really do think that you know mother forever has been passed down the torch to preserve the series to to do what we can to keep the series alive um but do you do you agree with this state st- statement you know like do you do you agree that that's what we're doing. I agree to a extent, I would say. Um, has the torch been passed down? I guess metaphorically, yes. But really, Mother Forever is its own thing. You know, it's not a continuation of Starman. It's not a replacement of Starman. We're not doing the exact same thing, and we don't systematically function the same way as we did. Obviously, we have the benefit of, you know, modern technology and social media, so it really is a different beast, but I feel it fills in a hole that a lot of people had when Starman sort of slowed down a bit, you know, when Fangamer came about and the focus went over to that Reed and Clyde are wonderful people and they have their own lives and jobs and success now and that's wonderful. So I feel like Starman, you know, the chapter's closing and Mother Forever is like the new prologue, the next generation. So that's how I feel about Mother Forever and passing down the torch. Yeah, you know, it's absolutely. a very respectful thing. I feel I feel the exact same way in, in the extent that, you know, it's an it's an it's an it's its own new thing, but it's not a continuation. It's not no. like the next chapter. It's a new whole story. Think of it as Starman's Mother One, Mother Forever's Mother Two. You know, it's the whole like it, it's connected to somewhat to extent, but it's not. That's in, the perfect metaphor. Yeah. Oh my god! Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's not interconnected. Like. You know, it's not a direct sequel. It's more of an indirect sequel, if that makes any sense. So, like, you yeah. know, you know, it, it's it's based in the same world. It's based in the same <laughs> things. It's got PSI abilities. It's got Paula. Yeah. She's still, apparently, according to Steven, George, she's still smoking. I don't know why, but, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Well, that's the thing. Like we have, <laughs> you know, documented some of Starman.net's history on our site, and talking about Reed Young and uh, their experiences and Clyde with yes. the translation. Uh, they don't have that on Starman.net because I think it would be kind of weird for them to write about themselves. <laughs> so yeah, we're paying, I mean, we're paying respects to their accomplishments in many ways. I suppose, like it would, it would be a little weird to have like yeah. an interview of yourself on a website that you made, but you know, yeah, then again, exactly. that's what we're doing right now. But you know, I don't know. Like I, I think of it as like an outside perspective because the thing is, is, I don't feel like I own Mother Forever. I feel like the community owns it. If anything, you know, like sure I host it, sure I do most of the stuff there, but I don't feel like any anybody different i feel just like a dedicated fan like most of us are you know so that's if why anything, i guess you're the you're the tom hanks polar express conductor to this wild train you know you're dancing to the hot chocolate song. yeah 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 i'm <laughs> dancing to the hot chocolate i'm i'm yeah. like doing the what's that guy with the, he takes like the ticket and he just like goes yeah 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 you're tom hanks you are literally tom hanks everyone everyone Everyone, shout out to Orange Go on Twitter and just at him. Hey, Tom Hanks. Hey, Tom Hanks. Like, With a happy you know, face. And then yeah. just gotta like, you gotta like put the gif of him like doing that to the ticket and it's just like, <laughs> I believe or something. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's been so long since I've seen the Polar Express. I gotta oh, watch that movie again. Absolutely. But, that's, um, that's, that's a screening right there. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, uh, that's a closing for the questions. But now we're going to move on to the mailbag questions. Now, a lot of people Ooh. have been confused about what mailbag is. Uh, mailbag is where I take a few of the questions that are in the mailbag channel on the Discord server. And I simply just ask our viewer or you know, our viewers or, you know, our guest here of what they think or what, you know, whatever is, is in there. And we, you know, have a little discussion. So I picked a few out of here. Um, 
Oddity Forever asks, Echo's bread ASMR win. Okay, so <laughs> the bread video is coming, I assure you. When I have the time, because you'll, you'll see, I have big plans for it. It's going to take some time, some nice editing, uh, maybe a 4K version. Uh, you'll see. That the, like intention, that like intentional pause in I, between. I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> well, I so so for context for anybody, there was a joke that was posted in the Mother Forever server, Discord server, where Echoes posted, "If this thing gets a certain amount of likes, I will eat bread or something." <laughs> well, eat, eat a loaf of bread, I guess, is what he said. I don't remember, but um, I, I guess one of the editors can put up like you know the the exact comment. But uh, apparently that was reached, and you have to make an ASMR video. It's about been it. months now, and it's people been ask months? about it. Wow. I haven't forgotten. I okay. haven't forgotten. When right. I have the time, I will film it. <laughs> so it, winter twenty fourteen. <laughs> winter twenty fourteen. Nice. <laughs> so the next question is from Sonic Chow. Uh, what was the most difficult part when it came to making Mother Forever? Oh man, what was the most? There were a lot of difficult parts, but the most. Hmm. I mean, for me personally, I would I would say definitely not the programming. I would say more of the organization, <laughs> but that's just me. I I think I think like maybe. Well, there's another question in here that ties into that too, but I I don't want to I don't want to dive into. No, much don't of, no, don't spoil me. Don't yeah, spoil me. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there when we get there. Jeez. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil that. I guess. I guess for me, the most difficult part making Mother Forever is trying to not stay relevant. I don't feel like that's a need. I feel like that's more of something that we already do. But more of trying to keep the site fresh, um, finding new ways to make content and new ways to preserve is, is definitely a hard part when making more things for mother forever i think the making of the website itself was easy i think what comes after is is much more difficult <laughs> yeah the presentation and making sure everything is accessed in a convenient way because that's always changing <laughs> yeah that's always gonna you know there's always gonna be something different especially we we mentioned a lot of the new design changes and flaws that we had originally in the mother direct and we changed those things with the forms and we added in like a lot of new mechanics and stuff. So uh, for those who haven't seen that, you should probably go check that out. Um, next following question is from uh, Shanae. Oh, I didn't answer. Oh, you didn't. Oh, that's right. You didn't oh, answer. Oh my go, goodness. Go right ahead. How could you? I'm sorry. Go, <laughs> it's go right okay. ahead. I forgive you. I forget. Wait, no, whoa. let's bleep. Whoa, whoa, <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Going, going to the hospital. Going... <laughs> uh, no, I would say uh, making each page fresh and interesting because, you know, uh, the way the writing is, I wanted each each page and article to be like its own story, a kind of a beginning, middle, and end. So, you know, it's investing to read opposed to just a drop of information. So it's organized in that sort of way. But I didn't want it to sound so repetitive. Each one kind of had the same flow for each page to feel unique with unique information and a sort of, you know, unique beginning and ending. Because uh, just a lot of pages, especially Wikipedia, it's just boring and just a slog to read. I feel so. So you format the pages sort of like you're telling a story. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Where the first, you know, the first sentence uh, grabs you, and then something new was learned or realized by the end. That's why a lot of things are, say, told from Etoy's perspective or his feelings or Iwata's or Marcus Limblum. So each one is different and personable, and I think that makes it really interesting because it is about those people and their uh, experience with the Mother series. Right, right. So it's it, you know it's culminating their story. It's trying to get yes. their impact of everything, and I feel like that's very important. Like not only in like persuasive writing or creative writing, but like obviously learning a writing style that fits and works for something like that, and then exerting it somewhere else where you can you know make something sound interesting. Like if you can talk about a trash can for thirty minutes and sell sell a trash can to somebody 
then by all means you are a god and are you challenging me no 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 i'm not challenging (laughs) you're gonna do it now oh no (laughs) lloyd's trash can why it's magical why it's magical and why does his dad live in one the more you know Mm, you're about to find out (laughs) (laughs) Uh, call call 1-800-999-999 1-800-SHIBA INU (laughs) Okay, so the next question is by I, I, forgive me for not pronouncing the name correctly. It's uh I think it's Shiani. Um Sh- uh Shiani says, "Did Mother Forever have a French or any other communities in mind?" Um I would probably say yes, mostly because while the the website originally didn't have this feature, it does now where you can Google Translate or 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 use Firefox to translate the the website to whatever language you want. Is it accurate? Probably not, but it, it's still better than nothing, I would say. I would love to have like a version of the site where it's like motherforever.fn for French or motherforever.jp dot com or something like that. You know, something along those lines where it has different versions of languages. Uh, of course, that would be very costly, but you know, <laughs> I would love to do that. Um, the reason why we sticked with the English community is because the English community is by far probably the most largest. Uh, I know that there's a huge following in Japan and a huge following in Europe, but in terms of what makes it easier for us is, is definitely the English. Um, what, what do you think? Like, is there? Yeah. 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 It- I don't know if English is the largest. It, it's hard to say, but really, English is the one that's uh, most needing of, say, a, a hub right now. Uh, especially because you know it's the most one of the most recognized languages, and you know we don't have a direct means to get that information of what's going on in Japan right now. You know, Earthbound Central isn't running. Uh, Reed Young is in Fan Gamer, so really. This came at the right time when the Mother Hobonichi project is going on. Uh, I think probably getting some of our information in Japanese would be the next step. Hopefully, maybe in conjunction with Mario, uh, Mario Party, <laughs> Mother Party, and one of those other sites. Because you know Japan has their own own hub, and uh, hopefully we can collaborate with them. But <laughs> I know there's people like Jumpman who are very. Uh, oriented in the french community so yeah we'd love to work with them or someone and yeah. get a lot of our information available in other languages it's just a means of time really well one of the one of the goals that we actually have in mind for mother forever is having a hub for each one of the mother games to have like different translation patches so that mm-hmm. people can come in be able to play the game in any language they feel or any language that they want uh because i feel like that's a huge under it, it's not a huge undertaking but it's it's a huge problem that I, I typically see in the game industry is that there's not a lot of language options for some people no and a lot of the time a lot of people have to learn a language that they're not familiar with i know a lot of people in europe you know they they get a lot of games and it's like oh english is the only one that's available and i'm like well that sucks you know like because english is very complicated. You know, there's no there's no genders attached to adjectives or adverbs. It's it, you know, there's no conjugates, there's no, no none of that. So imagine somebody who's used to that trying to learn English and not putting like he or, or she in front of like an adjective or adverb to describe something. So it it's it's very not intuitive and I feel like not 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 to like separate the thing where it's like okay, well, you know, not not to tell the person, well, you shouldn't learn English anyway, it's bad. No, you should learn, you know, languages, but at the same time, I feel like it's better for children. It's, you know, video games are definitely usually marketed to children, but mm-hmm. also adults. I feel that it's much easier for somebody to play a game in their native natural language than it is to play it in a game that they're, you know, is, is to play the game in a language that they're may, may know or may not be completely familiar with so yeah definitely want to have more people of of you know different culture different languages combined to mother forever to um have a hub of all those all those different 
kinds of, of, of cultures in there. Cause mother, mother series has always been about that, you know, diff- especially earthbound. Like, you know, you yeah. have people from, you have Jeff, which is coming from an England like place. You have, you know, Pooh who comes from obviously, you know, like in Indonesian type of land, you know, Dalam. So it, it, it's a combination of all those things for sure. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that opens the doors to new fans and does something, you know, innovative that, you know, even Nintendo's not really doing. I know living in Canada, one thing I find is a lot of their games aren't available in French Canadian. The only one I can really remember off the top of my head is Ocarina Time 3D. And French Canadian, of course, is very distinct from, you know, pure French. So I would love to see, you know, a French Canadian Mother 3 translation for those people to play it or you know uh, again french regular french is going on right now or russian other languages especially mother 2 since that's the most accessible of the three and i think mother 2 probably has the least fan translation patches out there i haven't Pro- seen many probably i mean i haven't yeah. seen I, i've seen like um i've seen like a portuguese spanish um i think I forget if it would, you know, if it's like Brazilian, maybe, maybe it's like, um, s- no, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say it's like span. It's like the other type of Spanish. There's like, you know, there's, there's Spanish in Spain and then there's mm-hmm. Spanish in Mexico and South America. So there's, you know, different variation there. Um, I know that those exist. I know somebody was working on a French translation and a German translation, uh, we actually got an email about somebody wanting to put the German translation and in, in the Mother Direct, and and I replied to them, but I I wasn't able to actually put it in the Mother Direct because we were already tough for time, and there's just not you know all that going on. But anyways, moving on to uh, the final mailbag question, which is uh, from Sai. Uh, Sai says, were there any aspects of Starman.net that were that impacted Mother Forever's site design or functions? Um, <laughs> well, if you, if you want to, if you want to like an honest answer, uh, I would say that it's more of a combination of starman.net, um, earthbound central and a little bit of Zelda dungeon. Um, I took, I looked at those three websites in particular, and I found a way of making a design that comes out that looks like it came from the nineties, you know, like a, like a nineties early 2000s design but it feels modern right it doesn't feel like it's slowing down it you know like it's got like a dial-up connection or something like that it, it definitely feels new now i did get a lot of criticisms when it first came out because uh i think one of the number one things was a lot of people were like oh not a first mobile design it's bad <laughs> <laughs> i remember that and um I- I don't really think that there's a lot of aspects from Starman. I know we were shared um, a, yeah. a, a redesign for Starman Donna, and I actually wanted to reach out to Reed at some point, say if I can, you know, maybe maybe do that for them. But I feel I like no idea. If yeah. any Storm Starman Donna design was taken into consideration, it would be the uh, the Earthbound .net design from yes. the yes. early two thousands. Yes, that one in particular. Yes, I, mm-hmm. I did get a lot of design. Uh, intake from that one mostly because i really like the layout you know all the stuff is up on top there's nothing too much on the sides originally we had a sidebar but then we moved everything down to the bottom and back into the the navigation which made it look a lot nicer because now a lot more clean yeah a lot more cleaner which was a huge huge problem and and something i realized is like oh yeah this is all cluttered and mm. so (laughs) Would I would I say that a lot of those designs and functions were ported over or anything? No, everything was done in WordPress, which is a which is a new interface that Starman.net does not have the um uh Starman.net I don't think uses. I know Earthbound Central does use uh WordPress, but um I think in terms of designs, like all of our, all of the websites have something that's a flaw of theirs. I wouldn't say that like my designs are much better than the other ones or anything like that. So I feel like there's some stuff that starman.net has that I wish I could (laughs) implement into mother forever, but I just know that it just wouldn't work with the way that we designed it. So, 
Yeah, um, everything can always be improved. Uh, definitely, every everything takes inspiration from something, but uh, it's not concretely Starman.net. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And a lot of people were like, "I'm gonna ask, like, well, what did you take from Zelda Dungeon?" Well, um, I actually looked at Zelda Dungeon's mobile design, and uh, I didn't, I didn't necessarily copy it. I loved the design enough that I wanted to implement something similar. Uh, so something like that when the mobile re- redesign hits in August, uh, that would be something that will be really, really cool for you guys to to play around with. Um, but anyways, is there is there anything you'd like to say to the mother community or mother forever or you know say hi mom or or something like that? Hmm. I only have one thing to say, and I'm only going to say it once. John Leguizamo. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> J- John Leguizamo. <laughs> Yeah, that's my my lasting contribution to the mother community. Oh, yeah, starting with John Leguizamo, me. Yeah, because <laughs> that's, no. that's a huge thing. Apparently, that R slash Earthbound has taken over. It's apparently a <laughs> thing that's going on there now. Well, that's been my ulterior motive. It's been coming from the Super Mario Brothers movie archive and just kind of putting my evil influence into the mother community. <laughs> oh, but no, ge- okay. genuinely, genuinely, like. You know, this was a great community to be raised on as a kid because the Mother Games taught me so much about the world and the community that the game's influence taught me how creative and, uh, you know, welcoming people really, really can be. Because we always talk about, like, oh, this community sucks, all oh, these fans are so bad, but I don't feel that about the, the Mother series. It's very wholesome and everyone gets along. We're open to people of all genders and sexualities and cultures. So what we have is very special and I think we have to really all put our best efforts to keep this afloat for the future. Uh, whether it's just you know getting along and doing projects or preserving the history of the series because you know it's not going to do it itself. So Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that go on into into just the whole like historical thing. So I absolutely agree that we have a community that is so very accepting of just pretty much everything. Um, that you know that that's something to behold. Not a lot of people, not a lot of communities are like that. You know, no. Uh, Smash is Smash is the one example that comes into my head. But I also think of League of Legends too. That those communities tend to. Not not toxic, but you know, mm. it's just a lot of stuff that a lot of people don't agree with. You know, they butt but, heads. Yeah, yeah, they they butt heads. Mm. Yeah, but when I see the mother series, I see a lot of people come together just to help. You know, just to come together and do something with everyone. Like with the mother direct, for example, that's a huge example of that. Um, never been done before by yeah. a, a fan community. Never done before ever. Um, yeah. So uh, history in the making there, which is really cool. So so yeah, yeah. That's been that was great. Well, it was lovely to have you on the show. Um, this is the first episode, so it was a little. I was I was worried that it wasn't going to go so well, but it actually went really well. I, th- I think it did. The only yeah. thing that didn't go well is I still don't have my pizza. I'm sorry, man. You have to go get your oh, own pizza. Oh, that's hard. Well. There's always a next time. Until then, thank you guys for watching and listening and whatever you're doing. Being cool. Being cool. Yeah. We love and, you. Yeah. Have, Buy our merchandise. <laughs> Buy our merchandise. No, we don't have anything. Oh, man. All right. Have a good well, one, guys. Bye bye. <laughs>